guy takes advantage of my little sister's disability, and I snap. A quick preface. One, this all happened about a year back. Two, I will not be using real names because I could be in deep crap if I did. All actors in this story will have their names replaced with JoJo references. And three, this is a long one. Context. My little sister, henceforth known as Holly, is mute. She can actually whisper a little, but it takes a lot of effort on her part. She's been mute ever since she was five, when she lost her ability to speak in an accident. She's very smart, and she's a good-looking kid. At the time of these events, she was 16 and I was 21. Me and my sister live together in an apartment because my mother is a roamer who isn't well-suited to take care of a teenager. She has our twin kid siblings, but not my sister and I. My dad is distant from the family, so helping my sister through high school falls to me. I work at a car parts shipping company, so I get paid just enough to get by. Because of our relatively poor living situation and my sister's inability to speak, she gets bullied at school. Generally, it isn't much of a problem, but in the few months leading up to these events, she was having increased problems with it. The buildup. At the time, Holly was 16, but she was a sophomore in high school due to failing a year in middle school. She refuses to take special ed courses, now because they didn't help her at all. Because she's good looking and is older than most of her class, she gets attention from juniors and seniors. It's mostly negative attention, but there was one guy who I will refer to as Dio from now on, he's the villain of this story, who treats her really nicely. He's a senior and at this time is 18. He repels bullies from her because he's a tall, handsome, tough guy and bullies don't want to mess with him. I don't interfere with them because my sister is visibly happy when she comes home from school and whenever she's around him. I didn't let them hang out alone together, but supervised them hanging out a few times. Anyway, King Crimson a few months and she stops coming home happy. She isn't hanging out with him anymore either, and although I ask her multiple times, she won't tell me anything about it. I confront him about it and he evades the topic. At this point, I'm suspicious, but I don't know what to be suspicious of. The researching. I'm getting more and more worried about Holly, so I go to her counselor and assistant principal to ask about her activities at school. From what I learned, she still spends all her free time near Dio at school. I find this strange since she doesn't seem happy anymore. This is where the illegal stuff starts. A few days later, I invite Holly and Dio on a dinner night to Olive Garden. No one can resist Olive Garden. While we're there, I do two things that are completely illegal. One, I steal his phone, which I've seen the password to, and two, I read his text messages and emails. Anything I can to find out what's happened between them. I don't find what I'm looking for, but I do find out that he drinks and smokes weeds with his friends on the weekends. This will be relevant later, but I find his phone in the laundry a few days later and say it must have ended up in one of our coats on accident. I know for a fact he got it back because he called me to thank me for having Holly return it. I still didn't have what I was looking for, so I went back to the school and used his previous texts as grounds to check CCTV for any suspicious activity. There wasn't anything suspicious by school standards, but there was something that caught my eye. It was my sister going to the central bathroom in the school and him going to the boys' room of the same bathroom about a minute later. The bathrooms are separated by a wall, but there's a janitorial closet that opens into both bathrooms and is completely in the blind zone of anyone walking into the bathrooms, let alone the CCTV cameras. At this point, I began to suspect that something was happening between them in the bathroom. It was the only one with a closet like that, and if my memory served me, the closet didn't have a proper lock. It just locked from the outside on both sides. The boiling point. Now that I suspected something, I confronted Holly about it. She broke down crying, and after 15 minutes of consoling, she shakily signed to me something that made my blood boil. Apparently, it was far worse than I expected. I had thought they were going in there and doing drugs or something, since Dio was the kind of guy who would pull that kind of thing. As it turns out, according to Holly, he brought her in there one day, closed the doors, held her down, and S aid her. He told her that he would know if she told anyone, and he would hurt her if she did, because she physically could not scream for help, or make any kind of loud noise for that matter. He got away with it. And the worst part is, he was threatening her into meeting him there every couple of days and doing that to her. 
I was livid. My first instinct was to call the police, but I realized there was no evidence except this testimony from a mute girl. I wouldn't be satisfied with the police intervention anyway. The first thing I did was call Holly in for a week from school. Family emergency can get them a week of excused absences easily. The next thing I did was find out where he lived. And after that, I planned the most brutal revenge I could think of. The highly illegal revenge. My first step was to break into his house. It turns out his parents go out a lot, and he leaves to smoke and drink with his friends. I knew from reading his text messages that there was a spare key on top of the porch light in the backyard. That Saturday, I scoped out the place and waited for everyone to leave. I then began phase one of my revenge. I went into his house through the back door and found his room. I smashed his PC, stole his wallet, and then urinated on his bed. Then, I poorly hid two small bags of weed in his house. I have a friend who grows. Finally, to hide the fact that it was targeted, I tossed up the rest of the house, but didn't take anything. I then went to a Starbucks and used the Wi-Fi and Dio's debit card, he didn't have credit, to purchase a bunch of sex toys in his name and send them to his house. I then left his wallet sitting near a homeless man sleeping on a park bench. Next, I contacted his parents and told them I had seen their son drinking and smoking with a group of teenagers. They were furious, which leads me to believe that this wasn't the first time something like that had happened. Finally, I went to the back road he walked on his way home from his drinking parties, which I found out in a text from one of his friends. I waited for two hours in some bushes for him to walk by, and then, wearing sunglasses and a hoodie, jumped him. I demanded his phone in money, although I knew he didn't have his wallet. I kept one hand in my hoodie pocket, pointing it like I had a gun, which he believed. He handed over his phone and then ran away. I then finished up my plan by using his phone, which I still have the password to, to send an email to the school from his school email, confessing to assaulting my sister in the janitorial closet multiple times, as well as possessing drugs on school grounds and drinking alcohol when he was underage. Then I snapped his phone on my knee and went home. The Aftermath My sister went back to school the following Monday, armed with a can of mace I bought her. Dio wasn't at school, and she was called in by her counselor. She confessed, and he was charged with sexual assault, underage drinking, and illegal drug possession. On top of that, his parents completely disowned him, and he was expelled from the school. Sadly, this story doesn't have a completely happy end. This whole ordeal sent Holly into a downward spiral. Her grades fell behind, and she barely smiled. In March of 2018, she attempted taking her own life by cutting herself, and it was pure luck that I found her in time. She's getting better now, but the emotional trauma will probably affect her for life. I pray to whatever cruel gods are out there that he gets a taste of his own medicine in prison. That was a dark story. Wow, we're getting more darker stories on, on this channel. I kind of like it, though. But how did he get the phone at Olive Garden? That was the one part that seemed to be skimmed over. I didn't see that. He said he, air quote, found it in the, uh, the washer later, but he doesn't say how he snagged it. But uh, other than that, this is a... Uh, I mean, look. Illegal meets illegal, so I'm not going to say that anybody did the good thing, the morally good thing here, but uh, he did a bad thing, and then a bad thing happened to him, and yeah, so what are your thoughts, if you have any? Next story. Story number two. Abuse me as a child? Teenage me might ruin your life. I've wanted to tell the story for so long, and I figured this was the perfect place. Apologies if the spelling and grammar aren't amazing. I've written this out in one sitting and don't have the energy to edit. When I was about 10 years old, my dad got a new girlfriend, Lauren. Lauren was an evil monster. When I first met her, she was lovely and friendly, and I quickly liked her. But over the years, everything went downhill fast. It started small. Lauren would steal my things and then deny it. Of course, everyone believed her. She'd tell me that my dad loved her more than me, and that if she wanted to, she could click her fingers and he'd never see me again. She read my diary and then told everyone what I'd written. She reported me to the RSCPA for abusing my animals. I wasn't. After a couple of years, she had my dad beating me. Yes, I know he was an adult with choices, and I hold him just as responsible. And she would constantly tell my dad how bad I was and encourage him to hurt me. After a while, he'd always snap and end up doing what she wanted. There are so many more things she did, but you get the picture. My dad and Lauren separated when I was about 16 years old. 
but they had a house together still. It was around this time that I was having thoughts of taking my own life and was a miserable teenager, so I decided I'd get even. I spent months on my plan, and this is what I did. I wanted Lauren's entire life to fall apart all at once, so everything had to be perfectly timed. I started by getting her fired and a minor criminal record. Lauren worked at a police warehouse for seized items, but naughty Lauren was stealing from the warehouse, so I made notes on what she stole and when. Once I had a decent enough list, I anonymously contacted her boss with my list. Lauren was immediately suspended. After a few weeks, she was found to be guilty of stealing. She was immediately fired and then charged with theft, including theft of a Class C substance. Now, Lauren was unemployed and pretty much unemployable. On to stage two. Lauren with no income needed to sell the house as she was now unable to pay her mortgage. My dad also wanted to sell so he could move in with his new girlfriend. So I made the house unsellable and pretty unpleasant to live in. My dad and Lauren were stupid and never locked their back door. I didn't have keys, so I'd sneak in when I knew they were out and hide disgusting things. Bugs everywhere, old prawns hidden under floorboards. I even stitched some old prawns into the bottom of the curtains. Dead mice everywhere, including under Lauren's pillow. Live mice in the pantry. The house stank and no one could figure out why. Estate agents refused to list it or would only list it for far under the value and potential buyers would leave quickly after no one could explain the source of the vile smell. Lauren was approaching bankruptcy, exactly what I wanted. Only one area of her life left to destroy. Lauren had been in a relationship for a year or so with this guy. I can't even remember the poor guy's name. We'll call him John. Well, Lauren was cheating on John and with his own father of all people. Poor John proposed to Lauren. He needed to know who she really was. One day, when Lauren had John's dad over, I got in the house via the unlocked back door and I grabbed her mobile phone, which she'd left in the kitchen. It took a few attempts and a lot of house watching to get lucky with the phone. I then texted John from her phone, pretending to be Lauren. I told him I was sick and asked him to come over. Of course, good old John rushed over. I unlocked the front door and texted him letting him know to let himself in as I was in bed sick. I left and hid around the area. The drama was intense. Lauren and John's dad, half naked, chasing after John in the street, screaming, crying. I think John might have even punched his dad before driving off. Obviously, the relationship was over, and John's dad even ditched her in an attempt to get his son's forgiveness. So, Lauren was alone, broke, unemployable, facing charges, and about to be bankrupt. Sadly, I don't know how the story ends. I cut contact with my dad around that time, and thus my connection to Lauren was gone. I do remember my dad mentioning her thinking about taking her life before we stopped speaking. So in my eyes, goal was achieved. I didn't need to see the fallout anyway, just knowing what I'd achieved was more than enough for me. And that's the story of how I got revenge. Writing it all out, I realize how unreal it sounds, but that's the whole story. Well, I think it's evidently obvious what this video's theme will be, don't you guys think? Uh, that is a crazy one. At some point, I was like, is this real? But I, I, I think it could feasibly be real. It, like she said, she spent months plotting. If she said she did this in like a week or something, I'd be like, yeah, right. But sometimes, I mean, revenge is a good motive. It's an effective motivator at times. And people will wait and be patient and just lie and wait and then strike. And it seems like that's what OP did. Next story. Story number three. My boss suspended me for his negligence. So... I ruined his life. For a little context, I work at a vape shop, which is already in a rough space due to regulations and laws the government is putting on us. Due to this, we were well aware that certain products we sold slash made were highly illegal and enforceable at any time. I-25M have been working at my job for a little over a year and a half. The owner of the company is the one who hired me and she was the biggest sweetheart in the world. Unfortunately, she was forced out of her company by her son. He is the type of person who believes that he is always right, and if you don't agree with him, he will completely ignore you or fire you. He literally forced his mom into retirement by threatening to unalive himself and continues to use that card every time she even says she wants to come visit. Last winter, we had a massive snowstorm. Getting to work was rough, but we were told that we had to come anyway. 
We get there and the snow isn't plowed from the parking lot because he didn't want to pay the guy to do it, so we had to. Due to the lot being absolutely massive, we couldn't get it all done in time for us to help customers. As they came and went, we noticed the snow being padded down into the ground and essentially turning into a slip and slide. Of course, he didn't do anything about it and asked me and another co-worker to clear all the garbage out of the other side of the building. When I did, I slipped and hurt myself. I didn't file for workers comp, but told them I need to rest myself while at work. The next shift, I sat almost the entire shift, and because I couldn't do anything, I sat on my phone only to get up to help customers. The next day, my manager tells me he got out of a meeting with the owner's son, and I was suspended for a week, five shifts. As I'm a college student and rent an apartment and have card payments, I couldn't afford to lose five days of pay. I marched into his office and laid it out that either he fires me so I can collect unemployment or unsuspend me. He told me neither was happening and that he was going to use me as an example to the rest of the employees. I was pissed and cursed him out. He doesn't like confrontation, so he shortened my suspension to get me out of the office. He then treated me poorly and signaling me out for everything everyone else also does, but I was the only one being punished. Then comes the fact that he wanted to reconcile by forcing me to do handyman work around the place and didn't give me the tools, equipment, or training to do or use any of these objectives. This was the tipping point for me. Time for the revenge. Due to being constantly singled out, I came to learn that everyone else was unhappy with this fact. I learned all the dirty little secrets about the company, including illegal products, labor violations, tax violations, etc. I used these secrets that I learned to call multiple government agencies, FDA, OSHA, DOL, and report him by name. First, OSHA came and did an inspection on my day off. He told everyone they only cited him for a small violation and he was good other than that. I was obviously angry at that, but a few weeks later I got a packet in the mail telling me he got cited for everything and he was getting massive fines. I then get called into the office again with the manager who told me I was suspended. He proceeded to tell my manager that he was getting demoted for not writing me up more and that I was no longer getting my raise until I fixed my attitude. This was of course right after he said, I don't care that you called OSHA. This little act is known as retaliation, which is illegal to do to people who called a protected agency like OSHA. He refused to even look at me at this point, because if he did anything that would imply he was punishing me for calling OSHA, I would have a lawsuit to destroy him. They're still there as I write this, so hopefully there will be more to come, but knowing how this works out in most cases, I won't have a job much longer and will be on unemployment. Update 1. The ATF also showed up. They confiscated all the house-made juices. We apparently don't have a manufacturing license. None of us knew this, and that means we may no longer be able to sell products. The IRS showed up because there's a possible cause for an investigation into tax evasion. As I learn more, I will continue to update. Update 2. It seems as though through talks with the lawyer, the son decided to actually take the heat for all of it and is going to have to pay massive fines and is possibly looking at jail time. He likely won't ever be able to get a manufacturing license for the rest of his life, and they said essentially that he won't be able to open any new businesses. I know he had two new locations rented out and in the process of opening, and those are never going to happen now. They're raiding his other business today, and that's going to be interesting considering that if he doesn't have the paperwork for that business, it could lead to much more jail time. So as of right now, even though my job isn't shutting down yet, his other business is getting raided. He can't open the two locations that he's put a ton of money and time into, and he's going to be fined all he's worth, and possibly go to jail. We'll continue to update. Final update. Hi guys, sorry for the long await after an update. After many long months and tons of setbacks, me and the other guys from my last vape shop have opened our own. We want to do everything the right way and make it a place where people can come and hang out like vape shops used to. It's a 21 plus sober building. We hope to make a safe and enjoyable environment for everyone and also provide them with safer alternatives to smoking cigarettes and cigars and using dips slash chewing tobacco. See, I like this story because it wasn't bad thing meets bad thing. It was bad person gets exposed for the bad things they did. So I, I kind of like that. I enjoyed the other stories too, though. But a question for you guys, would, would you ever go to these lengths to get revenge on someone who did you so wrong? Like something to the levels of these stories or other stories, would you plot revenge? Would you wait weeks, days, or months? 
Would you do something like that? I don't think I've ever done such like in-depth revenge before, but I'm like thinking to myself, am I capable of such a thing? I don't know. Hmm, next story. Story number four. Grandpa gave up what time he had left for revenge on my behalf. I grew up dealing with a lot of mental health issues, as my mother is a drug addict and my father liked to ignore my existence, as I'm the result of a one-night stand while he was married. So, needless to say, his wife hated me, and their children treated me horribly as well. The only good people I had in my life was my grandma and grandpa on my father's side. I loved them and spent a lot of time at my grandpa's business. I'll explain that a little later. Now, at 14, everything went further downhill. I won't go into details, but my mother almost passed away. And I met a man, let's call him Goat, he looked like one. And long story short, Goat was 25 at the beginning, and emotionally, physically, and sexually abusing me. All while I was under the belief that I loved him and it was okay. He pushed me away from my grandparents and isolated me for two years until a friend helped me get out of it. During the next year, Goat stalked me, threatened me, and had me absolutely terrified. I was afraid of going to the police as I didn't want to bring harsh light to my grandpa's business, and because I was afraid. I was staying at my friend's house for a while during this time, as my panic attacks and what I now know as PTSD was horrible, and I hated to be alone. During this time, my grandmother passed away. One of the only lights in my life left. So I became worse. I began drinking and going to parties and trying to forget my life. Right before my 18th birthday, Goat made a real life appearance again. On my way back from a big party, he jumped me, beat me black and blue, and almost killed me. I was found and taken to the hospital where they began treating me, and as I was underage, they asked me to call an adult in my life that they could talk to. I tried to call my father, but he didn't pick up. And knowing my mother wasn't going to help, I had to call my grandfather. He was at the hospital in lightning speed. And for the first time in my life, I watched this man that had built his own empire really break down. Even at my grandma's funeral, he didn't cry. I spent two months in the hospital, with police questioning me and my grandpa by my side every day. During this time, he met my friend who helped me out of all of it at the beginning and became very close to him. My grandfather helped me get on my feet for a whole year, until one day he had a large family gathering and socialized the whole time, taking me with him. That night, I will never forget when we went to get ice cream, and then he just hugged me for a very long time, holding me tight and reassuring me everything would be okay. The next day, my grandpa exacted his revenge. Now, my grandpa was the owner of a well-off law firm that also had private detectives in a smaller office in his building. He apparently tracked down Goat and went about his revenge. My grandpa shot Goat three times in the stomach and once in the chest. Goat passed away in the hospital later that day, while grandpa was taken in and soon put in jail for manslaughter which he pleaded guilty to. I never got the chance to visit my grandpa in jail as he passed away soon after in jail from complications. One week after my grandpa's death, I got a call from his solicitor and he asked me to go in. I was met with a lengthy letter from my grandpa, which was nothing but loving and showed that he had found out he had terminal lung cancer and wouldn't live much longer, but he couldn't happily leave me alone in this world without Goat being gone too. My grandpa left almost everything to me. At 20, I would inherit the law firm and could do as I pleased with it, and I inherited 95% of his savings, his house he lived in with grandma, and his other assets. In case anyone's interested, I turned 21 last week. I'm currently working at the law firm. My grandpa's secretary, now the CEO, has taken over the important things in the building and makes most of the decisions. I put half the money I was given into a locked savings fund for all of the younger family members to go to college when it's time. I cut off all contact with my father, who tried to steal my money from me during the death arrangements of my grandpa. My friend mentioned earlier in the story is now my fiance, and we are getting married next summer. I'm still suffering from PTSD and depression, but it's getting better every day. I'm in therapy for my PTSD treatment. I got a tattoo for my grandma and grandpa on my back of two lions protecting a cub. I also opened up a safe house for anyone going through abuse of any kind. No matter the race, gender, or age, I'm trying to help anyone I can in that situation. Besides for what I've put away for later in life, I'm also thinking of opening up the bakery I always wanted and employing the people that need the job and help the most, but I'm unsure at the moment about that. My grandpa and grandma were a godsend, and to this day, I miss them greatly. 
but I know I couldn't have changed the stubborn old man's mind even if I tried. I really don't know how to end this one. This has been a wild ride of a video, and the only constant thing here was revenge in various different amounts. I'm sure some people may not approve of some of the methods taken here today, but I think we can all agree that the people who were being revenged on f weren't good people. So, I mean, I can't necessarily feel sympathetic for them. I can't feel bad for them. Like, you did a horrible thing. You broke the law, you distreated people, you did people wrong, you ruined lives, and then your life was ruined. Or, in this story, taken, but... Um... Uh, I, I, I have to end on a positive note. That's my, that's my thing. Uh, your shirt looks nice. Drink water. It, broccoli tastes really good, but cauliflower, I don't like it. But anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.